that's what's more fun for me. I like. spent most of my life as With the Australian invasion of actors in Hollywood which began in the late 90s, you could be forgiven for thinking that the boom time of expats in Hollywood has been and gone. But then wait a minute, think about the Hemsworth brothers, Rachel Taylor, Teresa Palmer, and there's a whole new generation of hot young things doing big business in the US. And leading that pack is Twilight star Xavier Samuel. Growing up in sleepy Adelaide, Xavier showed an early interest in drama, pursuing it through high school where he starred in a number of Shakespeare productions. He then moved on to the Flinders University Drama Centre and graduated in 2005 playing the lead in their graduate production of Hamlet. Prior to this, however, ambitious Xavier had made his TV debut in the Aussie drama MacLeod's Daughters and was soon cast in his first feature film opposite fellow Adelaide mate Teresa Palmer, the complex and emotional 237. The film was shown at Cannes and Xavier was starting to get noticed. He next took a turn in September, a film about interracial friendship gone wrong, which was notable mostly because of the strong performance of 16-year-old Xavier. Then came the coming-of-age drama Newcastle, a gritty, realistic take on teenage life in the Steel City. Xavier played one of the leads, Fergus, a gay teen struggling for acceptance of his sexuality, but also as one who doesn't surf in a culture heavily steeped in surfing and the beach. Fergus is very much an individual. He's a man that, uh, or a young man I should say, that, that uh, is a bit of an outsider. He's not part of the, the surfy culture uh, as his brother Jesse is and the rest of the boys. Uh, so in that respect, he's, he's uh, He's sort of isolated from the group and uh, he has an infatuation with, with uh, another member of the, the surfy group that he wants to, you know, uh, sort of that prompts him to get involved and, and uh, then maybe, you know, become accept, accepted by his brother as well. Xavier especially loved working with the director Dan Castle, who unusually was an American telling the most Australian of stories. Dan's, uh, Dan's a fantastic person He's, uh, and, a, and a great director. I think it's really interesting that, uh, that an American director tells such a beautiful Australian story. I think that's, uh, there's kind of a irony there or something. But uh, he is just such a down-to-earth, uh, really, really, uh, uh, he has, he's just got so much perspective and he really sees the story. And, for, uh, for us to bring that to life, I feel you know, really great to be a part of that. The director also employed a Mike Lee style workshop for his young actors, the famous English director's process of rehearsal and workshopping to get his actors to a stage where they worked as a cohesive unit, something Xavier was grateful for. Dan was uh, very keen on rehearsing uh, you know, as a group and doing a lot of group exercises that would help us sort of bond together and I was really sort of excited about that, you know, because that's not uh, something that you come across very often, especially in film, uh, maybe a bit more in, in theatre, but uh, to do those sorts of things and to really build those relationships and give them a history uh, was something that was really refreshing and it gave a sort of inner life to the characters as well that I hope translates onto the screen. Xavier's sensitive portrayal of the struggling teenager touched audiences everywhere, even if his few surfing scenes were cause for giggles in the cinema. <laughs> How did I find the surf scenes? Well, uh, there were a few hairy moments. I'm not a, a surfer at all, so I had to uh, go for a few lessons uh, about three weeks before the film started down at, at Bondi Surf School, and they were great, uh, you know, sort of getting me to stand up and very encouraging. Uh, actually getting out there on set to do these scenes was, uh, was um, pretty daunting actually because I was you know, kind of stunned by how amazing and massive the ocean is and uh, we'd be out there beyond the break and, and as soon as you turn your back on the water it can just creep up behind you and, and smash you. So. The film was screened at De Niro's Tribeca Film Festival and soon there was international interest in Xavier. Although before he secured what would be a big break unlike any other, he chose to stay at home and get his schlock horror on in the indie hit The Loved Ones, which was a whole new ball game for Xavier. 
first direction I got from Sean was sitting in the prosthetic studio going, okay, now what expression would you make if there's a drill going into your head? <laughs> and I kind of went, oh, I don't know, like that? <laughs> you know, good, hold that. And then they poured all this stuff all over me and I had to stay like that for about half an hour. And it's going in my mouth and uh, it's kind of fun. Didn't taste very good. The film had a classic horror storyline. Girl meets boy, girl asks boy to school dance, boy politely declines, and girl goes all carry on boy, leaving him with a couple of extra holes in his head. Uh, well, I spend, the, I spend the majority of the film kind of tied to a chair, which is, which is actually kind of comfy to rock up to work and you know, sit down and go, cool. I don't have to uh, move around too much, but there's a fight scene that um, was supposed to only last for kind of 10 seconds, and Robin and I went away and rehearsed, and we came back to Sean with this kind of elaborate <laughs> five-minute, extremely well-choreographed fight scene where we would smash things off the kitchen table and, you know, uh, do all sorts of stuff, which was kind of probably a little bit um, over the top, but we ended up shooting a lot of it, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, lots of kind of bumps and bruises and um, it's just kind of uncomfortable to be sitting in all this sort of sticky blood and it's trickling in places that you'd rather it didn't trickle. So how does one prepare for a role when torture is involved? I'm guessing there's no method acting used here. I just sort of scream and growl a lot <laughs> before they uh, call action and then uh, that's my preparation really. <laughs> Nothing fancy, you know. I haven't been kind of uh, strapping myself to chairs and turning out the lights and, you know, asking anyone, ask, asking anyone to torture me. I've had a ball, really. And I guess working with Robin is, has been really wonderful as well. She's a, she's a wonderful actor and um, I guess I learn a lot hanging out with her and acting with her. And really, really good people. It's hard not to have fun every day, really, when you're making a horror film. Maybe being covered in blood isn't so much fun after a while. At first it's really cool, you know. Um, then you're like, oh, this stuff's sticky and I want to go home. <laughs> so what would Xavier hope that audiences take away with them from the film? Moral of the story is uh, if the slightly odd, quiet girl at school asks you to the dance, uh, say yes. During the making of The Loved Ones, Xavier had time to make an audition video for none other than the teen hysteria juggernaut, Twilight. David Slade, who directed Eclipse, saw Xavier's vid and immediately knew he had something special. Xavier was cast and jetted to Vancouver to join the cast of Hot Young Things for the shoot. Xavier played Riley, the leader of the newborn army of vampires. Xavier has likened his role to a kind of vampire Macbeth situation and he is under the thumb of a fiery Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, Riley is the leader of the newborn army. The newborns are kind of like, hmm, how do you describe them? I guess like when you're a human and you first get bitten by uh, a vampire and transformed into a vampire, there's a really short period of time where you're extremely strong and you're extremely thirsty and you basically just want to kill. Uh, so that's really useful if you're, uh, if you're building an army. <laughs> it's been great joining Twilight, you know, everyone's given me a really warm welcome, which uh, I was kind of worried about because I played the bad guy, right? <laughs> so I was thinking I might be ostracised or something like that, but um, no, everyone's really, really nice and uh, Vancouver's a beautiful city as well, so I'm having a good time. Taking refuge from the Twihards, Xavier completely switched gears and jumped into his Elizabethan period duds with Anonymous a conspiracy thriller which begged the question, was Shakespeare a fraud? And always making work in his hometown a priority, Xavier returned to Oz for the comedy A Few Best Men, directed by Priscilla's Stephen Elliott. As you can see, Xavier loved the camaraderie created on set by his three best men. You know, uh, not, uh, Xavier in a way had the hardest part in this film because he was playing the straight, the straight guy, you know, and that's the, you know, he's like the maypole that everyone else dances around, you know. So, and believe it or not, he's actually quite funny in real life. Yeah, I know. Occasionally. Originally, I was playing the bride, and then we <laughs> had to change that. Yeah. He was <laughs> <ugly>. <laughs> 
One of the things I really like about Steph as a director is he's quite he late. just he, he's lazy. He's no, laissez faire. All oh, right. Say. I just think he um, French, darling. All oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Speak English. To te fait. Me to use your line. No, I, I think he just refuses to compromise, and I think that's a wonderful asset for a director to have to kind of just go, "This is it. This is how it's going to be," and 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 to really kind of um, follow through with that. So watch that face. Xavier Samuel has a CV of films set for release over the next couple of years. And here at Star Picks, we believe he'll continue to mix things up, keeping us intrigued and Twihards happy for years to come. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and MNC.TV.